Welcome. There's this number e in mathematics, which turns out to be approximately 2.718281828459045. That's as much as I remember, not as I memorize things. Um, that appears in mathematics in a couple of places, and it's a little mysterious to kids. They usually first see it in a pre-calculus class when they're discuss discussing compound interest. And there's this number e that arises in that way. And then later they see another number e, which appears in calculus. And it's assumed that it's not at all obvious and it should be absolutely questioned whether these two numbers e are actually the same. I'll actually tend to that question, I'll talk about compound interest in the number e in another video. But what I'd like to do now is actually derive what e is in the context of calculus. It is the natural and the right number to use that makes calculus easy. Though the letter e doesn't stand for easy, actually it's in reference to the mathematician Euler. Okay, so what is E? I'm going to have to assume that we know a basic derivative. So we're in the beginning first semester calculus or beginning uh, AB calculus in the high school world. And let me get us to the number E. It really comes from the problem of, of how do you differentiate certain types of functions. And mathematicians are pretty good at differentiating polynomials in the 1600s and, and later, and good at differentiating sine x and cosine of x and so forth. And then it became very natural to ask, how do I work out the derivative of, say, exponential functions? So here's an exponential function, y equals 2 to the x, some little sideways. If I went with some position x, I'd love to know what's the slope of the tangent line at any position x. Well, of course, this is given by a limit, and I'm really asking for the limit as h goes to 0 of my function at x plus h minus my function at x, all over by the difference of x values, which in this case is h. Well, the nice thing about exponents, I can do a little bit of algebra on this, and I see this is really 2 to the x times 2 to the h. So there's a common factor of 2 to the x on the top line, which I'll pull out. Then as h goes to 0, that gives me the limit of 2 to the h minus 1 all over h. So the question of how to work out the derivative of 2 to the x boils down to how to work out this specific limit here. And you can try as you might to do all sorts of algebraic tricks on this, and you'll find it's just obnoxiously obstinate. It doesn't want to yield to a nice, simple answer that you can identify easily. You might try multiplying by the conjugate 2 to the h plus 1 on the top and on the bottom and see if that helps. It doesn't. You might try taking uh, all sorts of logarithms, but then you need to know what the derivative of logarithm is. Don't know that unless you know what the derivative of the exponents are. All sorts of troubles. The best thing you can do is say, OK, well, I don't know what the answer is, but at least I can approximate the answer. h is going to 0. Let's put in like h equals 0 0.001 and can just compute the thing by hand. And you find the number turns out to be about 0.69. So we're in the position where we can say that the derivative of 2 to the x is about 0.69 times, oh look at that, 2 to the x, times 2 to the x. Not very satisfying, that's approximate, I'd love to know what the 0.69 really is, don't know at this stage. Well after that little sort of a partial success, but it's really not quite success, it's just a, still intuitive, you might say, okay, 2 to the x may have been awkward, let's try a more another one, let's say y equals 10 to the x. So it's a very similar graph. You want to actually work out the slope of the tangent line at position x. And you'll be doing the same sort of work here. I'm going to be a little bit sloppy with my, my board work here. So doing the number 10, uh, 2, you'll be doing the number 10 everywhere. And you'll find you're stuck trying to work out that the derivative of y equals 10 to the x is really 10 to the x times an obnoxious little piece, 10 to the h minus 1 all over h. And you're stuck the same sort of problem trying to understand what this number is. Well, after hours and hours, days and days of fiddling around with algebra that didn't seem to yield a result, you might just try plugging in 0.001 or something and get a feel for it. And if you do that, you find that the derivative of 10 to the x wants to be about, whoops, I don't know what I'm saying, equals, it should be about, I think it's 2.3. If you actually plug in the numbers in a calculator, go 10 to the 0.001 minus 1 all over 10, or over 0.001. So in this case, the derivative of 10 to the x is about 2.3 times tends to it, times itself. Not very helpful. But then Euler had a brilliant idea. If 2 to the x has a derivative that's 0.69 times itself, and 10 to the x has a, num has a derivative that's 2.3 times itself, there's got to be some really nice clever number in between um, whose derivative is basically 1 times itself something between 0 0.69 and 2.3. So let's choose the nicest value we want. 1 would be lovely. He didn't call it e. It's a little arrogant to name a number after yourself. But mathematicians have since called it e. They said there is some number that's twixt 2 and 10, such that the derivative of e to the x equals 1 times itself. 
turns out this number is actually between 2 and 3. In fact, it's about 2.7182818288. So in calculus, it's very natural to say, OK, differential ex exponential functions is a pain, but there's got to be some very nice number whose derivative is the easiest thing it could be, apart from being just a constant derivative. That is, e to the x, there's some number twixt 2 and 10 with the property its derivative is itself. Wonderfully easy, very natural for calculus. Then it seems natural to use e as the base of a logarithm. If, I'm going to, if, if e to the x is the natural thing for exponents in calculus, then a logarithm base e is the natural one to use, and mathematicians call that ln, the natural logarithm. All right, so can we go back to our original question and differentiate y equals 2 to the x and y equals 10 to the x? Now we've got e under our belts. Well, amazingly, the answer is yes. Here we go. So if I look at y equals 2 to the x, just need my pen back again. Whoops, where's my pen gone? Here we go. 2 to the x. This is actually e to the log of 2 to the x. And using log rules, that's e to the 2. It's x times log of 2. The little exponent just comes down up front. Oh, so what's the derivative of 2 to the x? It's really the derivative of e of it times a number times itself, and that number is log of 2. And if I use the chain rule, that's the derivative of any e to the exponent, it's just itself, so it's basically e to the kx again, times the derivative of what's inside, which would be derivative of kx is k. So actually, the derivative of, e to the, of 2 to the x is log of 2 e to the log 2 times x, that is log of 2. 2 to the x. And what is log of 2? On your calculator, you find it's 0.69. So now I know that 0.69 I saw at the beginning was actually the natural logarithm of 2. And that 2.3 I saw at the beginning for 10 to the x is the natural logarithm of 10. So e is that number which makes calculus easy, at least with respect to derivatives. It's defined to be the function when used as the base of an exponential function has its derivative being itself. It's natural for calculus. That's e. Now what's surprising is, it's the same number that arises in compound interest studies. Another video. Thanks very much.